This is John Deloney with Ramsey Network. It's good to see you today. I hope you're doing well. Today we are talking about what to do when your loved ones, when your wife, your partner, your mom, your dad, <clears throat> spins out with anxiety. And I got an incredible email from a dude named Chris, and we're gonna spend the next couple of episodes working through it. This guy is awesome. Everybody needs to be a husband like this dude, a partner like this dude. Check it out. Here's the email. Dr. John, my wife struggles with anxiety and has bouts with binge eating. She's been talking with a professional, there's been improvement, but I feel the focus is on the result, binge eating. So if I understand your videos correctly, and to use your analogy, her treatment isn't even focused on turning the fire alarm off, it's focused on not lighting another match after the alarm has sounded. Yes! Yes, dude, you are on. It's perfect. If you don't know what Chris is talking about with the fire alarm analogy, check out the link below. Go watch the video, Everything You Know About Anxiety Is Wrong, part one, two, and three. You can buzz right through them, but it just talks about anxiety is a fire alarm. It's just an alarm in a kitchen that's on fire that we've created or that we've been dropped into. Nothing more, nothing less, and he is right on. Okay, so stop here. Go watch that video if you don't know what he's talking about, and then come back and join us. So. Chris goes on to say, I want to help her put out fires and save the kitchen. My wife is amazing. She's career successful, a fantastic mother, and wonderful spouse. The problem is, from an ignorant spouse's perspective, I love your humility, she places impossible measures on herself. She has to have a perfectly clean house, a constantly engaged one-year-old, a full meal on the table, be the perfect spouse, and be a perfect employee. She's a caretaker at heart and relaxing makes her feel guilty, especially when there is something to be done, which there always is. Welcome to being a woman in the 21st century. Awesome that you're seeing this, Chris. I've tried taking things off her plate, but she adds something else to it. In my eyes, she already is what she almost kills herself trying to be. How do I help shoulder her burden and be a more supportive spouse? And get this, everybody. I want to be a fire extinguisher, not fuel. Dude, like I said earlier, Chris, I'm nominating you for husband of the year for seeing and experiencing things in your wife, for wanting to honor her and love her and be supportive, but being humble enough to say, I don't know what to do, man. I'm watching the person I love burn a hole through their own soul, which then burns a hole through our home, burns a hole through everybody around us. Dude. Your wife is experiencing what I call the curse of the 21st century woman. They have been told since they were born, you can be anything, you can do everything, and you can have everything all at the same time. They've been told you don't need other people because you can do everything. The people around you will probably fail you. And there's been experiences over their life where they are judged on achievement, on what you can accomplish, what everything looks like. Oh, and by the way, here's eight trillion Pinterest posts and Instagram stories to show you, give you pictures of what life is supposed to be, how perfect it's supposed to be. And over the arc of that story, people are rewarded for achievement, for doing, for serving, to making sure everyone else's needs are taken care of. And that wires itself into a, a young woman's DNA. And of course, I'm not a woman myself, so I haven't experienced this. But this is just from countless conversations and coaching sessions with women over the years. So here's a couple of things I want us all to wrap our head around, but you specifically, Chris. Number one, I didn't get a hint of this here, but I feel like I need to say it. We've got to stop treating our partners like machines. People aren't broken. Number two, people aren't puzzles to solve. So people aren't machines that are broken and people are not puzzles to solve. They are humans to be with. And so if we approach someone that we love, who we see spinning, we see out of control, we see struggling, our first impulse is to, especially as dudes, is to, how do I fix this? How do I help? How do I insert myself and become a solution to a series of problems? And I want to challenge that approach and say, how can I just be with? Because what people are struggling with in this situation so often is a lack of connection, a lack of true value. Right? So Chris, I'm just gonna make some assumptions, fair or not fair. I would almost guarantee that your wife has experienced some lack of control in her childhood home 
or in her high school college experience. I don't know how long y'all have been married, but my guess is she has experienced some lack of control in her life. I would almost guess that she's experienced some sort of trauma too. Whether that is acute, something happened, some, she had some negative experiences, or there's some brother in the house that got more attention. There was somebody else that got the attention. There was a mom who was struggling. There was a dad who had issues. Um, we all have issues, right? But there was a dad who had some challenges and she had some sort of neglect. So it was either acute trauma or neglect. And somewhere along the way, she achieved homeostasis. She achieved value by making sure everyone around her was taken care of, by achieving, by scoring points in some game that none of us can win, right? There is no win to this. And when you throw a kid in the mix and a husband in the mix and a mortgage in the mix and, um, and business accomplishment into the mix, all of that just gets spun up and spun out. So you're watching the woman you love grind herself to the floor. So here are three or four things, Chris, you can do right now, okay? Number one, I want you to practice SOS, skin on skin contact, three or four times every day with your wife. So start the day right when you get up, when you both get up, either right when you're about to leave for work or when you get home from work, and then right before bedtime. And it doesn't have to be intimate sexual contact, it can just be touching feet, the most effective way I've heard and seen is holding hands and looking her in the eye and just tell her, dude, some quack on the YouTubes told us that we should do this for 30 days, okay? But I want you to hold her hands, look her in the eye, and say, tell me about your day. Tell me how you're doing. And when she responds to you, say, thank you. Or say, that sucks. Or say, that's awesome, I'm proud of you. What a gift, thank you for sharing that. And that's it, no advice. No, well, you know what you should be doing and I'll call that dude, none of that. Just connect. The second thing I want you to do is ask her if you can join her in a counseling session. Ask her if you can start going together. Um, you can either join her in her current sessions with her current therapist or y'all can go see somebody together. And the importance of that is you looking at her saying, I wanna learn the skills, honey, to be a better support to you in our home. I wanna love you better, I wanna learn tools that I can support you better. And just that sentence alone is gonna let her know, Whew, I've got support and care. The third thing I want you to do comes from Emily Nagotsky's work. And she's talking more about sex, but it applies all over a partnership and a home. I want you to look for ways to turn on the ons and turn off the offs. And so some of these things that she feels compelled to do all the time, perfect house, make dinner, take care of the kids, I want you to start finding ways that you can gently, quietly, and without fanfare, take these things from her. And you're right, right away she's gonna refill that. It's gonna be like sticking your hand in, in, in a bucket of water and pulling it out. It's just gonna fill itself right back up with more time, more things. But as you start to pull these things off, and here's the magic secret sauce, and this is number four, every week sit down with her and say, hey, what does this week look like for us? What does the week look like moving forward? What's your picture of this week gonna look like? You paint a picture, you craft a vision of what this week is gonna look like and this week only. And over two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, she will begin to feel a peace. Because <sighs> all anxiety is, is fear of the future, fear of things I can't control. It's an alarm. <sighs> and planning, controlling the controllables, being in connection with somebody, over time it silences those alarms. And then she's gonna have to do the hard work, probably with a professional to shift her identity into being okay with the wonderful, extraordinary woman that you write about here. Knowing that when she looks in the mirror, she's a person of value. Not because of what she can achieve, not because how much peace she's keeping in the house. Just because she's her, and that's enough. So if you're watching this and you're like, why did you just say to hold hands and look her in the eyes, you weirdo? Why don't you tell her to go to the therapist? Or, oh, we're gonna make a plan that's gonna make it better. Listen, watch the next two videos and I'm gonna unpack why in the short term this helps folks that you love who are struggling from anxiety. And after that, we're gonna talk about how to co-create an ecosystem that is fireproof, that doesn't catch on fire all the time, that the, the alarms aren't always going off, because y'all can do that together. This is Dr. John Deloney with Ramsey Network. Subscribe, send these to your friends who are struggling with anxiety. I'm getting your emails at askjohn at ramseysolutions.com. I'm getting them from all over the country. My email is just blowing up, it's so dope. I'm gonna keep responding to them. Thank you so much. Follow me at John Delone, all the stuff, whatever. Hey, have a good week.